you know what, I'm gonna tell you right now and I'm gonna be fully transparent. This is exactly what I was looking for in this particular video. This is what I wanted to compare uh, with the before and after. Hello everyone, welcome once again to my channel. It's your boy Luis Portellas and for today's video we have a very special one because we're gonna be talking about Michelle's D full performance during Miss World 2019. And you heard that right. We're not gonna be talking today about her Miss Universe Philippines journey that she is in the middle of as of right now, but we're gonna be looking back at her previous journey during Miss World. And the reason why I really wanted to make this video is because this type of look backs uh, will allow us to really get a better understanding how the candidate has evolved over the years and also how versatile this girl is when it comes to adapting to different environments. I personally think that this is very important because she had a completely different approach to Miss World just like she is having a completely different approach to Miss Universe Philippines and if she was to get the crown she will also have to adapt to a whole new dynamic for Miss Universe International. I've been planning this type of videos for some of the candidates who competed internationally and even some of those who already competed within Miss Universe Philippines such as Pauline. So please let me know in the comments if you're interested in this type of video so that I can make more of them. And as usual, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like so that it gets recommended to more people. Subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one almost every single day. And subscribe to my channel for more videos like this one almost every single day. So without further ado, let's get into today's reaction. I really hope that you enjoy it. This is the national costume. Beautiful as, as always. Wow. Okay, all right, let's talk about this very quickly. So we had access to two different segments here. Uh, of course, the national costume, beautiful, you know, I, I love the color yellow. At the same time, I could already see from the video all the attention to detail that there was on the costume. But I'm really more intrigued about this particular look that she's wearing right here with the blue gown. I think it's beautifully done, really suits her well. And at the same time, it's like, pageant enough but also it feels you know elevated it feels very fashion forward another thing that i wanted to highlight is her styling when we think of michelle right now in miss universe philippines with a very short hair very modern very edgy in a way here she's going for more of a conservative look uh, with her hair completely tied in a bun and it gives her more of a mature woman look which is obviously the type of girl that usually miss world will be looking for so it's quite a shock to see the contrast between michelle three years ago and Michelle right now, how she has been able to change over time and adapt to the environment of each pageant. All right, they have a number here with the singers and everyone's just having a good time, okay. But where is Michelle? Where's my girl Michelle? Oh, there she what is. What we do here is go back, 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 back. Okay, now she's wearing a green gown but it seems to be like the same style same design and everything so did she wear the same gown in different colors for miss world please let me know in the comments because i'm not sure if it's the same gown and they just altered the video or if maybe she had like different versions of it please let me know there she goes Okay, now the gown is blue again. So I think it's something with the light. I think it's the same gown. I'm Michelle D. I'm 24 years old and I'm a model and actress in Manila. My motto in life is that everything happens for a reason and that everything that does happen is either a blessing or a lesson. If you want something for yourself, you really have to work hard for it. To win this world means gaining a platform and gaining a voice that's heard and listened to. I want to become a beacon of hope that influences positive change because I know that with a unified effort, that's when we can really make a difference. You know what? I'm gonna tell you right now and I'm gonna be fully transparent. This is exactly what I was looking for in this particular video. This is what I wanted to compare uh, with the before and after and is really how she is able to present herself. And why do I say that? Well, 
Sometimes I've seen girls that from a pageant to another, they change drastically, not only with the styling, not only with the way that they present themselves, but also it seems like their personality adapts and it changes. And sometimes that's a good thing to a certain extent, but then it can also suggest that there is a little bit of fake of something that, you know, it's kind of like created from scratch just for the pageant and that is not who the person really is behind the scenes. I mean, judging by everything that I've seen of Michelle so far within the challenges and videos and photos that have been released for the Miss Universe Philippines organization, based as well on the interview that I had with Michelle here on the channel and even the small, the few moments that I had with her before going live um, on the interview, I feel like she's the same woman. Like she speaks the exact same way, very calm, very put together, like she's in control, but you still can feel that she's open, that she's warm, but she's still in charge in her element. Of course, when you look at this, you will notice that the styling has changed drastically. I don't think there has been that much of a change on the makeup. Even Michelle nowadays is very, very, you know, toned down, very natural looking makeup. And I really appreciate that from her because it really accentuates her natural beauty. And of course, Miss World is much more like advocacy driven than Miss Universe. So Miss Universe is more about being fierce and the looks. And yes, of course, the advocacy. But Miss World is really, this is the main thing, like the core of the entire competition. So yes, I can see how Michelle did adapt to each one. But what I'm really, really happy to see at the end of the day especially up until now is that she was able to stay true to herself not only back in 2019 but also in 2022 i love this so far you see why tell me if you want to see this type of videos for other contestants as well and i'll make them all right let me know it's such a proud moment for me and my country and i can't be anymore excited to be here thank you mm -hmm. Says it all. Thank you very much. <laughs> Come on, Tony. <laughs> she couldn't believe it. <gasps> yes, girl, it's you. Come on now. <laughs> Yeah, so I remember talking with Michelle, you know, I'm preparing for the interview when I was looking at some of the informations and articles from back in the day that she only made it within the top eight, which already is a huge accomplishment because as I was saying, like Miss World is very advocacy driven. It's not just about the beauty and how you prepare for the pageant, but there are so many different layers. And let's be honest, no one understands how Miss World really works. The decision belongs to Julia and whoever she likes the most, she will go with that. But, but still, the fact that Michelle was able to make it within the top eight, that's already a major, major, major accomplishment. I'm Michelle Marquez, the Miss World Philippines 2019, proudly raising my flag, not only to make my country proud, but to show the world what we Filipinos have to offer. Talking about what Filipinos have to offer. Yes. Yesterday we were on our way to the House of Lords and people started screaming and it was like they, yes. they recognized us and they were no, they were asking for where's Miss Philippines? Where's Miss Philippines? And you have people waiting with your cell phones. You have such a good group of fans. It's, it's very humbling to see the support that they've been showing me, even just the staff here in the hotel. They've been taking care of me, giving me Filipino food because they know how much I'm homesick for Filipino food. And it's amazing, mm -hmm. Mr. World was held in Philippines, yes. so it's how don't you miss it. <laughs> You know, I can really not make this up. You guys, if you haven't watched my interview with Michelle, please go ahead and watch it. 
she speaks the same way like she hasn't changed anything about her speech or like her accent i really like that she has been so consistent since then up until now because i don't feel like she's trying to change who she is as a person to please or to be liked by the people of the organizations that she is competing for if anything yes she will adapt the styling she will adapt you know whatever accessories and glitz and glitz and glams that come with the pageant but michelle will stay herself at all times i think that's a key element is the food, <laughs> for sure but back to business back to business um you used to live in a ranch yes that's very different from the city mm. yes do you miss different. it of course I miss it. I miss remembering the times I had back on the ranch because I feel like it really curated me into the person that I am now. Mm -hmm. um, I gained a sense of love for animals. I learned how to do all of my adventure sides there, learning how to ride ATV, learning how to groom horses, how to herd cows, how to shave goats, how to milk animals mm -hmm. in general. I remember my stepdad could never get control of me because I was this eight-year-old little kid driving in fourth year when he said only to go up until second. And I broke my arm. Mm. Thankfully, I still have my arm right now. <laughs> but it, it's just such an amazing time. But more importantly, growing up in such a humble town of six to 7,000 people, um, it really taught me the purpose of independence. And if you want something for yourself, that you really have to work hard for it. Mm. And you can't, just depend on the people that are next to you to give you what you want in life. And to just touch on that, that's why I moved to the Philippines as well. At the age of around 15, I wanted to get to know my father's side more. And it was then that my father really helped me in terms of my head game or a very spiritual, spiritual side of the family as well. And he really helped me just own my, my capabilities and it was also where I gained a relationship with my grandmother. Mm -hmm. My grandmother is such an angel. When she was on earth, she was an angel on earth. She passed away five years ago. It was her death anniversary prior to coming here. And I really credit my love for giving back to her. She has spent her whole life or most of her life giving back despite her position of privilege. Um, she founded this foundation called Inner Peace Foundation. And it's basically a group of people that come together to share their experiences and to just help each other grow. And it's been in existence for more than I've been alive. And it's just so humbling to have that kind of values and qualities that raise you because it really gives you a sense of purpose, a sense of belonging, and a sense that you really just want to give back to people that help you. And... And now on to your beautiful with a purpose, I think, because <laughs> everything's going on that direction, I see. What is your beauty with a purpose? Well, my beauty, of a, my beauty with a purpose is autism awareness. Mm -hmm. And I grew up with two autistic siblings, one older and one younger. So since I had an older sibling with autism, it really showed me firsthand what these kids or individuals on a spectrum go through. Uh, and coming from the States or coming from the USA, you really see the difference of laws, of health services that are embedded in the community or in the laws, or even just the educational system, which is very absent in the Philippines yeah. nowadays. We don't have a law that protects autistic individuals. We don't have those health services readily available for them. Mm. So the foundation that I work with is with Autism Society Philippines. And they're the nation's widest and largest um, autism awareness community. And they've spearheaded so many things in the Philippines, including the National Autism Care Plan. Mm -hmm. um, as In addition to that, they also have 97 chapters all across the Philippines. And the reason why I work so closely with them is because I recently made a trip to the mountain province of Sagada and it's deep down north in the Philippines. And I was there for a medical mission and we catered to learning people with learning disabilities and just disabilities as a whole. And it really warmed my heart because I saw people that from five years back couldn't even speak. You know what, okay, I'm just gonna stop here very quickly because I don't wanna like make it overly long without giving you some of my feedback, otherwise I will forget about it. But I mean, let's just be honest, there is absolutely 
nothing to criticize uh, when it comes to her delivery, when it comes to her speech, the way that she presents herself, the structure of her sentences, everything is flawless. I mean, Michelle is a phenomenal communicator. Um, now, what I will say is that I know like some of the story, of course, because I prepared for the interview with her. Even within the interview, she opened up about her advocacy, spreading awareness about autism and what that work looks like. However, I don't think like within Miss Universe Philippines, she has had the moment yet to really open up as much. I hope that she will be able to do it during the interviews. I hope that she will be able to make it to the Q&A segment and somehow she will be able to open up and show more of that story because right now in Miss Universe Philippines, I feel like we focus too much on the fear side and the fact that she has international experience and that she's doing this and she's doing that and oh my gosh, she's so beautiful. And all of that is true. But Michelle also has a lot to offer when it comes to her communication skills, just like how phenomenal she is, but also all of the work that she has done over the years uh, with organizations and having an advocacy that is so, so close to her heart because it's something that touches her family directly. So yes, I am amazed, impressed by how good she is right here, but honestly, not that much because I already knew that she was going to be, you know, incredible. Um, my only wish is that she's able to show a little bit more of this during Miss Universe Philippines so that those who didn't follow her journey back in the day during Miss World or those who are not as familiar with who she is as a beauty queen and that just know her as a public figure will get to see that she is more than a look. Do you see where I'm coming from? Please let me know. Couldn't even converse and now they're speaking, they're having fun and when I found out that some families of over like a hundred would travel five, six hours by foot just to get to these uh, to the institution, it really, it really opened my eyes to see that this is what I want to help. This is how I want to help my country. I want to, in, I want to add these chapters all across the rural areas. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, um, the Autism Society Philippines has also a campaign that's called Autism Works, and here we give training and we help families and big establishments really train individuals on a spectrum to have a, a more sense of purpose. Because the, the misconception with individuals on the, on, on the autism spectrum is that they have no purpose. They can't do anything. But what the reality is, is if you just give them the right opportunities, if you give them the right place in the world, then they will feel like they belong. And that's what I really want for them. I want them mm -hmm. to be happy. Yeah, I think that uh, I'm so happy that you're following your grandmother's legacy. Yes. We're proud of you, Philippines. Thank you very much. Wow. Wasn't that incredible? Wasn't that phenomenal? Honestly, as I said, I'm shocked at how good she is, but at the same time, I'm not shocked at all because, of course, I was expecting this exactly this level of consistency but notice how it didn't feel rehearsed it didn't feel like she was just trying to come up with fancy terms or doing anything along those lines just to give us like a passion party answer uh, to me honestly michelle feels very very genuine i know that a lot of people feel a little bit disconnected from her because of certain things but i think that she is a very good very solid contender for the crown and if she was given the chance to become the next Miss Universe Philippines I think that she will do an amazing job but anyways you guys I think that I said most of my comments during the video already so I want to know how you feel about Michelle as well and do you think that she has what it takes to be the next Miss Universe Philippines as well let me know in the comment section I will be reading all of you and while you're at it don't forget to leave a like on this video so that it gets recommended to more people subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one almost every single day and last but not least come here and give me a hug you know that's a little tradition on the channel you know that i love you that i appreciate you thank you for coming and spending a few moments out of your day here with me <laughs> and until i'll see you next time please stay safe be kind to one another sending you all my love all my kisses and i'll see you on the next one